the topic for today's seminar is single complete dentures. These are the contents under which we'll be covering the seminar. Introduction, the single complete denture opposing all or some of the natural dentition is not an uncommon occurrence. The incidence of tooth loss is more in the maxillary arch than in the mandibular arch. The primary consideration for continued denture success with a single conventional complete denture is the preservation of that which remains. A single complete denture can be defined as a complete denture that occludes against some or all natural teeth, a fixed restoration or a previously constructed removable partial denture or an existing complete denture. Single complete dentures could be maxillary single dentures or mandibular single dentures. Maxillary single complete dentures could be opposing natural teeth, opposing fixed restorations, opposing removable partial dentures, or opposing an existing denture. Now, maxillary single dentures opposing natural teeth. The natural teeth may be malposed, dipped, or supra erupted, which will interfere with achievement of balanced occlusion. The imbalance may produce soreness, mucosal changes, and risk resorption. So, the single denture will tend to get displaced. The reasons for this are the inclination of the occlusal plane is usually unfavorable. Individual teeth may be malpositioned and have assumed positions that present excessively steep cuspal inclinations, and the buccolingual width of the natural teeth may be too wide. Failure to alter these conditions will often prevent the development of bilateral balanced occlusion in eccentric positions. Now, Thielman simplified Hanau's print, making it easier to understand how to obtain balance and therefore stability. The following is the simplified equation. Five elements to be considered are the condylar guidance, incisor guidance, compensating curve, cuspal inclination, and the occlusal plane. Equilibrium or balance is achieved when these five elements are in harmony. The change in any of the five elements requires a change in at least one of the remaining four elements to maintain balance. In patients who are present with full dentition on the mandible, the condylar guidance, occlusal plane, and compensating curve are already preset. So the only variables that the dentist can easily control are the incisor guidance and the cusp height. The incisor guidance can be evaluated with aesthetics and phonetics, and the cusp height can be chosen by either of these two methods. First is that the cusp height equals to the sum of condylar guidance and incisor guidance divided by two, or by Swenson's formula, which states that the cuspal inclination is equal to incisal inclination plus a fraction of distance from the incisal guidance. In patients with flat occlusal tables, the teeth can be reshaped or non-anatomic teeth may be chosen. Acrylic teeth are chosen over porcelain teeth because the amount of adjustment that is required may sometimes weaken the porcelain teeth and make them unable to withstand the occlusal forces from the natural teeth. In addition, the wear characteristics of acrylic teeth are similar to those of the natural teeth. Discall and Mastery proposed a classification system that could simplify the identification and treatment of patients with single dentures opposing natural teeth. Class 1 are patients for whom minor or no tooth reduction is needed to obtain balance in all excursive movements. Class 2 are patients for whom minor additions to the height of the teeth are needed to obtain balance. This situation may occur when there has been loss of tooth structure because of trauma or decay or when there is isolated supra eruption in areas without the loss of vertical dimension. Class 3 for patients whom both reduction and addition to the teeth are required to obtain balance. The treatment of these patients involves change in the vertical dimension of occlusion. Class 4 are patients present with occlusal discrepancies that require addition to the width of the occluding plane. These patients typically have angles class 2 malocclusion and present with constricted arches, resulting in a posterior crossbite. And class 5 are patients who present with combination syndrome, which will be discussed later in the seminar. Now, maxillary complete dentures, when it opposes the fixed restorations, it is best to develop the occlusal surfaces of the fixed restoration at the same time that the opposing denture teeth are arranged to permit greater flexibility and to obtain bilateral balanced occlusion. If existing fixed restorations are present during diagnostic procedures, it should be determined if they are acceptable, if they can be made acceptable, or they must be rejected. When the restorations are acceptable, the occlusal concept to be pursued is decided. 
also the material of artificial teeth used is decided. When the occlusal surfaces of the FPD are made of porcelain, the artificial denture teeth are of porcelain or acrylic resin. When the occlusal surfaces of the FPD are gold, occlusal surfaces of artificial denture teeth are preferably gold or acrylic. Now, maximally single complete denture opposing an RPD. If an existing RPD is present, then the remaining mandibular teeth should be in considerable state of dental health. The occlusal plane, tooth arrangement for occlusion, aesthetics and material composition of the teeth must be acceptable so that a complete denture can be constructed to oppose it. If a new RPD is to be fabricated, then the treatment planning is done for both arches at the same time. Artificial teeth for these dentures are selected based on the following factors. If opposing RPD has porcelain teeth, then porcelain teeth are preferred. If acrylic teeth are present or uh, it opposes the natural teeth, then acrylic teeth are preferred. Maxillary single complete dentures opposing an existing denture. A thorough evaluation of the existing denture is done. The teeth of the denture should be aligned with regards to the residual ridge of its basal seat for mechanical stability and masticatory efficiency. They should have a good appearance and exhibit proper tissue support. Also, the cusp height should be suitable for the teeth of the planned denture. Then the denture base is evaluated. It should have an aesthetic contour and thickness to adequately support the perioral structures, be extended to utilize all supporting tissues, and should be stable and retentive. Five questions are to be analyzed. First is how long has the existing denture been in use and was the denture an immediate insertion at the time of removal? The answers to these questions have a direct relation to the extent of bone resorption. The loss of bone determines the accuracy of adaptation of the denture base to the basal seat. The third question is that does the denture meet the requirements of an acceptable denture? In addition to accuracy of tissue adaptation and border extension, one must evaluate the tooth position, aesthetic appearance, condition of the polished surface, including contour, finish, and of the occlusal plane. The next question is that has the denture opposed another complete denture as opposed a partially edentulous arch which an RPD, a restored natural teeth, natural teeth with no restorations, or an FPD? This influences the arrangement, size, shape, form of the teeth used in existing denture. Also, the height of the denture teeth should be sufficient if selective grinding is needed to be done. Next is operator satisfaction to institute a complete denture of utilizing the existing CT. This is, the rare, this is rarely satisfactory solution as few old dentures fulfill ideal requirements in all areas. Now, maxillary single complete denture opposing mandibular implant supported over denture. This is a three year prospective study for the assessment of masticatory function of mandibular implant supported over dentures. The purpose of this study was to evaluate the changes in the masticatory function from baseline to three months and three years in participants with mandibular implant supported over dentures and to assess the bone height and volume on masticatory function after three years. 23 dentulous patients presenting for replacement of dentures were provided first with conventional mucosa supported processes and were evaluated for masticatory function after three months settling in period. This was taken as the baseline measure. Masticatory function was assessed using paraffin wax cubes as the objective measure and using masticatory ability as a questionnaire as a subjective measure. Baseline measures of bone height and volume were recorded by CBCT imaging. The processes were then converted to implant stabilized mandibular overdentures and the maxillary processes remain supported by the mucosa. The masticatory function was assessed after three months and three years after placement of uh, mandibular implant supported overdenture. It was concluded that the masticatory function significantly improved after three months and was maintained over the three years in participants with implant stabilized mandibular overdentures. However, baseline bone height and volume had no significant effect on the changes in the masticatory function. Now the techniques for occlusal plane correction, these are the different techniques. Let us look at each one in detail. Swenson's technique given in 1964. In this technique, first maxillary and mandibular casts are mounted at an acceptable vertical dimension with the centric relation record. The maxillary base is made and the denture theta set. 
The articulators then moved to various eccentric positions for study of occlusal balancing contacts. The teeth are rearranged to obtain uh, best possible occlusal contacts. If interferences are there, they're adjusted in the cast and marked with pencil. Grinding of uh, the interferences on the mandibular teeth on the stone cast is done with the movement of maxillary porcelain teeth over mandibular stone teeth. Then preliminary grinding is made on the patient's teeth at the location suggested by the stone cast. Thin articulating paper is placed over the mandibular teeth and opening closing movements are made to indicate the areas to be ground in centric relation. These areas are reduced by fine carborundum stone. After gross interferences are reduced, an arch-shaped layer of softened base plate wax is placed over the teeth and the patient is asked to close in centric relation. The high points are identified and reduced with grinding stone and the process is repeated in all eccentric positions until occlusion is balanced. The disadvantage of this technique is that it is an arbitrary technique and is technique sensitive. It is also time consuming as it, as it needs several impressions and mountings before occlusion is finalized but the proposed adjustments can be evaluated ahead of time rather than clinically. Next is the Eugstar's technique given in 1968. This method involves the use of a U-shaped metal occlusal template, which is slightly convex on the lower side. The template is placed on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth of the lower cast, and the cusps that are too high or low are identified. The high cusps are reduced, until even curvature of the occlusal surface is established and the reduced areas are outlined. This cast is then used as a guide to modify natural teeth. The disadvantage of this technique is that it is arbitrary as the reduction done in the natural teeth is arbitrarily done to imitate the reductions done in the cast. Next is Bruce technique. In this technique, uh, the casts are mounted with proper centric relation record. Acrylic raisin teeth are selected and tentatively arranged to observe occlusion. The artificial stone teeth of the opposing cast are carefully trimmed to develop balancing contacts in all positions. Then a clear acrylic raisin template is fabricated over the modified cast and the inner surface of the template is coated with a pressure indicating paste. This template is then placed over the patient's teeth but, and the interferences can be seen through the clear template and are recorded by the indicator paste. These interferences are removed by grinding the proper teeth until the template sits properly. This technique is more accurate than the techniques developed before this, but is still not very precise as there's a chance of overcutting of the tooth structure as it is done without the template in place. Next is Boucher's technique given in 1975. This technique differs from Svensson's technique in that here the dentures process before the areas to be reshaped are noted on the cast. The natural teeth are ground at the areas marked on the cast and the occlusion is refined in right and left, left lateral excursive movements until a harmonious balance is achieved. This again is an arbitrary technique and is not precise. The next technique was proposed by Gardner et al. in 1990. This technique describes the fabrication of treatment template using autopolymerizing acrylic resin and vinyl polycyloxane. Occlusal plane is first adjusted by the use of a 20 degree template. Autopolymerizing acrylic resin reduction guides are placed and adjusted on the diagnostic cast. Then label and lingual components are separated for removal and the guide is placed in the patient's mouth before reduction is to be done. A similar procedure can be followed by using vinyl polycyloxane guide instead of acrylic raisin guide. This technique is more accurate as there is less chance of overcutting and reducing the tooth structure as the guides are in place in the patient's mouth. Next is Stan's technique given in 1997. In this technique, modified surfaces are marked on the mandibular cast, then a clear template is fabricated over the modified cast. Voids under the template indicate the location and amount of odontoplasty to be done. The template is then cut to the level of the modified stone tooth cast. Then margins of the cut template are marked with a permanent mark. This template is then placed in the patient's mouth and portions of the natural teeth that are protruding through the template are clearly visible and have to be ground away. 
the template in math indicates the precise amount of odontoplasty that has to be done. This technique is thus more precise and accurate. Now coming to selective grinding, failure to correct occlusal errors, especially in single complete denture cases, results in destruction of the residual alveolar ridge as bone in time will remodel to relieve the soft tissue subjected to excess pressure. Selective grinding, which is defined as the intentional alteration of the occlusal surfaces of the teeth to change their form can be done to correct the occlusal errors. Methods to detect occlusal errors, they could be detected by the use of articulating paper, wax template, abrasive paste. The markings obtained by articulating paper were discriminated as proper contact, which is a single dark spot in the tooth. Light contact, which is a faint smudge that is left on the teeth. Premature contact, which is denoted by white spots by uh, surrounded by carbon rings or donuts. The sequence for correction of occlusal errors followed was to first restore the centric occlusion, then correct the working and balancing side contacts, and then correct the protrusive balancing occlusion. Bull's concept, it is a method for adjusting occlusion given by Schuler, where the adjustment is made to the inclined planes of the upper buccal cusp. and the lower lingual cusps on the walking side in order to preserve the centric stops on the cusps which are normally in occlusion. Now coming to modification of Bull's concept. First is that adjustments can also be done on the inclined planes of the lingual surface of upper buccal cusp and the buccal surface of lower lingual cusps on the walking side in lateral trusive contacts to reduce the walking side interferences. To eliminate protrusive interferences, distal inclines of maxillary lingual cusps and mesial inclines of mandibular buccal cusps or mesial inclines of maxillary teeth and distal inclines of mandibular teeth can be adjusted. Methods to achieve harmonious balanced occlusion. These could be done with functional chewing techniques or articulator equilibration techniques. Coming to functional chewing techniques, these are records of the occlusal relationship of opposing teeth in all functional ranges and movements that will provide greatest masticatory efficiency without causing undue strain or trauma to the supporting tissues. These are the most accurate method of recording occlusal patterns. Certain prerequisites to carry out functional chewing techniques are that the record bases should have good stability, the patient should have good neuromuscular control and mental competence to effectively cooperate. These are the different functional chewing techniques. Stansberry technique. In this technique, compound occlusal rings are trimmed buccally and lingually so that the occlusion is free in lateral excursions. Carding wax is added buccally and lingually and the patient is instructed to perform chewing movements. The carding wax gets functionally molded Whereas the compound rim in the central fossa maintains the vertical dimension. The generated occlusal rim is then uh, removed from the mouth and stone is vibrated into the wax path of the cusps. This record is secured to the lower member of the articulator. The denture teeth are first set to the lower cast of the patient's teeth. After aesthetics have been approved and tried, lower cast a uh, chewing record is secured and all interfering spots are ground. Thus, in centric and eccentric movements, maximum balanced occlusion is obtained. Next is the Wiggs technique. In this technique, uh, first uh, impressions are made, casts are poured, and the denture bases are fabricated with cold cure resin. Centric relation at acceptable vertical dimension is recorded, and anterior teeth are arranged. The occlusal rim posterior to the cuspid is removed and raisin in dose stage is placed and the articulator is closed to press the raisin against the occlusal surface. When the raisin is set, it is trimmed so as only to leave a fin of acrylic raisin that contacts the central grooves of the opposing teeth. The patient is then asked to make lateral excursions to bring the tips of the mandibular cusps in contact with the fin. This is the sagittal view of lateral excursion with the acrylic raisin. 
then contacting the second bicuspid only. The height of this cuspid is reduced by grinding and its length is retested in the same manner. If most of the teeth do not contact the fin or lateral on lateral excursions, then the teeth must be ground until equal contact occurs between the teeth and the acrylic fin. If the acrylic fin contacts all of the cusp tips except one in lateral movements, the fin must be lengthened. The opposing central groove could also be deepened by grinding. This uh, dotted line shows the deepening of the central groove, which is done by grinding. Then acrylic raisin is added to the fin and contacts are made during excursion and are tested again. This is done till even contacts are achieved on both sides of the arch. Then holes are drilled through the plastic fin, sticky wax is placed in the holes and soft wax is added on the buccal and lingual sides of the fin to build up the full width of the posterior teeth. Now to form the tube and record, the master cast is poured without boxing and the record obtained for wax chewing. The cast record based tube and record counter casts are mounted on the articulate. The posterior teeth are arranged according to the occlusal scheme of the mandibular teeth and all interferences and lateral excursive movements are removed with the help of the chew and record. This technique creates cuspal harmony in non-functional glides. The advantage of this technique it, is that it can be used in patients with limited motion, unusual patterns of masticatory movement, persistent bruxism, or other atypical situations that can be accommodated with this technique. Functional impression is a reasonable and logical procedure as the borders will be extended to the distance permitted by the functional movements. This technique is contraindicated if the mucosa is so resilient that it can allow shifting of the record bases during the chew-in phase. Next, coming to Shari's technique. This technique was, uses a maxillary rim of softened wax when lateral and protrusive chewing movements are made. The wax is abraded, generating final parts of the lower cusps. And this is continued until the correct vertical dimension is achieved. Next is the rut technique. In this technique, impressions are made and two raisin base plates are constructed in the maxillary cast. Tentative jaw relation is recorded and the teeth are selected in position when the patient is present. Duplicated denture base is placed on the cast and modeling wax is warmed and articulator is closed. The modeling wax, uh, when it is in occlusion position, the divider is used to make the vertical dimension reference measurements. Then the wax denture is inserted and subjected to the usual check. After that, recording wax, a functionally generated path procedure is added to the other occlusion rim and the patient is asked to do mandibular movements. Now to make the stone core, the completed wax path record is placed on the master cast and opposing cast is removed from the articulate. The generated wax path is carefully boxed and poured in stone. The upper denture teeth are set and ground to fit the generated path that is recorded with the stone. This is a case report. The fabrication of maxillary single denture was done in a patient with deranged mandibular occlusal plane. This is the preoperative frontal views and the edentulous maxillary arch with healing multiple extraction sockets in the anterior edge. This is the pre-treatment mandibular occlusal view showing severe attrition of mandibular anterior teeth resulting in an irregular occlusal plane. Fabrication of the stone form with copying the curvature of a volleyball with approximately 8 inch diameter to closely match the monsoon sphere which also has an 8 inch diameter. The curve of monsoon helps to achieve a proposed ideal curve of occlusion in which each cusp and incisal edge touches or conforms to a segment of the surface of a sphere 8 inch in diameter with its center in the region of the glabella. The stone form is then placed in a vacuum formed thermoplastic machine for the adaptation of the template. This is the OTP template that is placed on the cast to diagnose occlusal discrepancies. Diagnostic wax up is done and a putty impression is done, made which acts as an index this party index is placed intraorally against the mandibular anterior teeth for composite restorations. After composite layering is done, 
final evaluation is done by placing the OTP template in the patient's mouth. Occlusal refinement is done according to the OTP guide. Maxillomandibular relationship records are made. After the denture is processed, it is remounted to correct the occlusal uh, surfaces for occlusal refinement. This is the post-treatment frontal view and occlusal. Now, functionally generated part technique. It is defined as the registration of the parts of movement of occlusal surfaces of teeth or occlusal rings of one dental arch in plastic, wax, or other mediums attached to the teeth or occlusal rings of the opposing arch. Functional mandibular movements, especially during mastication and swallowing, are directed by three determinants. First is the neuromuscular system, then the occlusal and cuspal guidance, and right and left temporomandibular joint function. When all of these are compatible with each other, normal function exists. When there is any incompatibility, abnormality or malfunction exists. So functionally generated part is a static representation of the opposing cusp's dynamic movement from centric position to eccentric position to achieve optimal articulation and occlusal harmony. This is a case report where modified functionally generated part technique is used to develop an occlusal scheme in single complete dentures. This is the pre-operative view. Generalized attrition of the mandibular teeth was noted. The mandibular occlusal plane was satisfactory without any supra eruption. Hence, no correction was needed. Impressions of both the arches were made and two record bases were fabricated. On one record base, impression compound was used to fabricate the maxillary occlusal ring. Then carding wax was added to the full width and length of the compound occlusal ring. This assembly was inserted into the patient's mouth and the patient was instructed to first close in centric occlusion. And these indentations were recorded and were served as future centric stops. Then various jaw movements are done by the patients to obtain functional chewing record. This is the functional chewing record that has been obtained. This generated wax path was carefully boxed and dental stone was poured into the cast. This serves as a stone core, which is mounted on the articulator, and the artificial teeth were arranged against the stone core. This is the post-operative view, and this is the functionally generated path prosthesis in occlusion. Now, coming to mandibular single complete dentures, the mandibular arch is seldom the edentulous one. It usually happens as a result of surgical or accidental trauma. The mandibular single denture poses an even greater challenge to the clinician, as there could be severe residual ridge resorption, which makes conventional treatment nearly impossible. There could be relatively small area for support, limited quantity of the mucosa often uh, worsens the problem. Also, the impact of occlusal forces from the moving mandible contacting a static dentate maxillary arch, maxillary removable partial denture, and mandibular complete dentures. The diagnosis of partially edentulous upper arch with a completely edentulous lower arch is usually complicated because of poorly fitting uh, lower dentures. These could be as a result of severely resorbed lower residual ridge. To overcome problems mentioned above, the authors have proposed three specifications, which are understanding proper execution of the correct impression technique, correct registration recording of the centric relation, and correctly formulating the scheme of occlusion. Also, the use of endoscious dental implants to provide retention and support for mandibular complete dentures can be done. This also helps to retard the residual bone resorption. Potential adverse treatment outcomes of single complete dentures are Kelly's combination syndrome, denture fracture, and tooth wear. Now, coming to combination syndrome, it could be defined as the characteristic features that occur when an edentulous maxilla is opposed by natural mandibular anterior teeth and mandibular bilateral extension based removable partial denture, including loss of bone from the anterior portion of the maxillary ridge, hyperplasia of the tuberosities, papillary hyperplasia of hard palate mucosa, supra eruption of mandibular anterior teeth, loss of alveolar bone and ridge height beneath the mandibular removable partial denture basis. Kelly gave the name combination syndrome to this condition. 
the lack of posterior occlusion and presence of excessive anterior occlusal function by supraeruptor anterior mandibular teeth led to the use of the name anterior hyperfunction syndrome. Kelly put forth five features describing the combination syndrome. These include loss of bone in the anterior maxillary area, which is replaced by fibrous flabby tissue, downward growth of the tuberosities, papillary hyperplasia of the palate, lower incisor supraeruption, and bone loss under the removable partial prosthesis. Saunders added six additional features, which include loss of vertical dimension, occlusal plane discrepancy, anterior spatial repositioning of the mandible, loss of stability and defabrication of existing dentures, development of epilus fissuretum, and periodontal changes of the remaining teeth. This is a video describing the pathophysiology of combination syndrome. This is the maxillary edentulous ridge and the mandibular ridge with only anterior teeth present. Combination syndrome develops as we give a complete denture for the maxillary arch and a distal extension removable partial denture for the mandibular arch. Since the patient has anterior teeth present only, for better proprioception, the patient tries to concentrate the occlusal load in the mandibular anterior teeth region. As there is increased occlusal load anteriorly, there will be increased resorption of bone in the anterior maxilla. And due to continuous loading and unloading of forces, a flabby tissue develops, which does not provide adequate support for the denture. Next, the occlusal plane will get tilted anteriorly with the fulcrum of rotation in the cuspid bicuspid region. This will give a negative pressure in the PPS area. So two things occur. First is the resorption of the anterior maxilla. So, uh, so the labial flanges of upper denture impinge on the labial sulcus and the presence of negative pressure. Due to the labial flanges of the upper denture impinging on the labial sulcus, it causes the irritation of the mucosa and produces epilus fissurette. And due to negative pressure posteriorly, we'll have fibrous overgrowth of the maxillary tuberosity area. In addition, there could also be papillary hyperplasia of the heart palate. Now, due to the canting of the occlusal plane, the forces of the lower distal extension RPD will increase and there will be resorption of the mandibular distal extension area. Due to the resorption, the vertical dimension at occlusion will decrease. the stability and retention of the dentures will be compromised. Due to the canting of the occlusal plane, the mandibular anteriors will supra erupt with time in absence of a firm antagonistic stop. Due to their supra eruption, the periodontal support will be compromised. After the supra eruption, the lower anteriors will again will apply force in the anterior maxillary region and the cycle will continue. Now, treatment planning plays an important role in prevention and management of combination syndrome. First is the prevention. It in involves retaining weaker posterior teeth by using combined endodontic and periodontic techniques. Endoscious endodontic implants can be placed in posterior mandibular region. An overlay denture can be planned for the lower arch. Modifications. Uh, in case a removable partial denture and complete dentures have to be given, Kelly advocated covering of the retromolar pad to have stability of the lower RPD 
Schmidt advocated the construction of a lower RPD first and then to construct the upper complete denture. Choice of occlusion, the posterior occlusion should be free of any supra erupted contacts during centric and eccentric positions. During protrusive movement, there should be minimum contact in the anterior region when the posterior teeth are in contact. Overdentures could be given. In this case, the lower anterior teeth are treated endodontically and their height is reduced. This can be used for proprioceptive sensation of the lower jaw and also prevents resorption of the underlying Implant supported prosthesis in the posterior region of the mandible also helps in decreasing the residual ridge resorption. Surgical considerations. Kelly advocated surgical excision of maxillary tuberosity fibrous growth to establish proper occlusion. Treatment of combination syndrome requires recognition of the factors involved. There should also be frequent recall visits for checkups with frequent relining to compensate for the resorption especially in the lower distal extension RPT. The patient should be educated about the possible outcome of treatment so that there's better understanding of the syndrome and the patient cooperation will improve. Next adverse treatment outcome of single complete dentures could be denture fracture. These could be due to heavy occlusal contact, deep labial free nine notches and high occlusal forces due to strong mandibular elevator muscles. Midline tracks of acrylic denture base results due to flexural fatigue strength, acrylic deformation of the base during function, sharp changes in contour, or residual processing stresses. Carefully planned occlusion, adequate denture base thickness are necessary to prevent fracture. Still, if the fracture potential is high, cast metal denture base could be given. Various other approaches, such as use of metal mesh, wires, bars, high impact acrylic raisins could also be done. Maxillary complete denture fractures. If there's uneven or deflective occlusal contacts, restoring the proper occlusal plane should be done. If there's increased vertical dimension of occlusion, it should be corrected. Palatal torus or prominent midline palatal suture should be given judicious relief. If there is a broad maxillary label free enough, renectomy should be done. Mandibular complete denture fracture. If there's faulty occlusal plane, there should be achieving proper occlusal scheme. If there's decreased entire space, metallic denture base is preferred. Resilient denture base liners with optimum thickness should be used. Excessive relief should be given if lingual tori are present. Advantages of metal denture base are that there's lack of bulk with more, store, more strength. The metal Base prevents warpage during processing. They are stronger and less subject to breakage. There's more accurate fit and more faithful reproduction of the tissue details. There's less tissue changes that occur under metal denture bases. There's also dimensional accuracy. They're less porous and have better thermal conductivity. The other adverse treatment outcome of single uh, complete denture cases is tooth wear. This can be prevented by using different occlusal materials. Now coming to the different occlusal materials. Porcelain teeth, these teeth wear very slowly, but therefore they maintain the vertical dimension for longer periods of time. But they're predisposed to fracture and chipping. They're more difficult to equil equilibrate since the surfaces do not mark well with articulating paper and it causes rapid wear of the opposing natural teeth. Acrylic raisin teeth causes no wear of the opposing natural teeth. They're easy to equilibrate. The major disadvantage is the uh, raisin teeth wear. Occlusal, uh, gold occlusals, these are considered best material to oppose natural teeth, but their expense and time involved in fabrication make them impractical for most patients. Acrylic raisin with amalgam stops. Amalgam stops appear to reduce the occlusal wear. After the acrylic teeth have been placed in balanced occlusion, occlusal preparations are made an amalgam is condensed into the preparation. IPN raisin, this was first developed to minimize disadvantages of acrylic raisin teeth and porcelain teeth. This material consists of unfilled, highly cross-linked interpenetrating polymer network. This is a case report where occlusal refinement by functionally generated amalgam stops is done for single complete denture. A semi-adjustable articulator was used to achieve balanced occlusion. Then the denture was processed. 
at the denture insertion appointment, a new centriculation interocclusal record was made, and occlusal adjustments were carried out by remounting the processed single denture. Occlusal equilibration was done in the patient's mouth by selective grinding. Occlusal preparations were carried out in the premolar and molar acrylic teeth, extending to include as much of the articulating paper tracing as possible. Then a mixture of amalgam was triturated and condensed into the occlusal preparations. This was placed into the patient's mouth and the patient was directed to close and centric relation and to perform all eccentric movements to carve out the condensed amalgam. These movements were continued till the setting of amalgam occurred. This is the final functionally generated occlusal patterns that are developed in amalgam. Conclusion, careful observation and recording of all diagnostic information must be considered before decision is reached to construct a single complete denture. Certain conditions must be evaluated and corrected early in treatment to provide for more stable processes. The unique biomechanical features of a patient with single denture should be emphasized and proper method should be used for controlling denture teeth and opposing teeth to maximize stable functional relationships. These are my references. Thank you.